Hi and welcome to Siska Stitchings. In today's video, I'll be showing us how to make this beautiful A-line umbrella dress or umbrella flare dress. And it is a very, very simple tutorial. We're going to see how to create this beautiful outfit. So the first thing you're going to need is your fabric. And I have my fabric folded into four right here because we're going to be making the front and the back at the same time. We're going to be cutting the front and back out at the same time. So right here, is the folded part which is going to form the neckline for the front and the back and then right at this edge is the open end which we are going to cut the side seam that's where we are going to cut the side seam so the length of this fabric is measuring 37 inches okay i'm making it this short because we are still going to attach a ruffled part at the bottom the length is 37 inches inclusive of seam allowance half an inch at the top and about half an inch at the bottom and what we are going to be doing is making the front shorter than the back so we are going to be doing sort of like a high low um, umbrella dress we are going to cut out the back before we cut out the front and i'm going to show you how the width of the fabric on fold is about 22 and a half inches how did i arrive at 22 and a half inches what i did was to divide my hip circumference by four my hip circumference is 43 43 divided by four is 10.75 and what i did to that 10.75 was to multiply by two so if i should multiply by two i should be having 21.5 but right here i have 22.5 okay so the extra one inch is going to serve as similar ones for our dress so the first thing i'm going to do is to come right here i'm going to be marking my armhole um, circumference divided by 2. I'm going with 18.5 inches. If you divide that by 2, that will give me 9.25 inches. So what I'm going to do is to add half an inch to that, making that um, 9.75 inches. So I'm going to come right here, mark this 9.75 inches, come to the folded edge of the fabric and repeat the same thing, mark 9.75 inches. And what I'm going to do at this moment is to join the two points across to have a straight line. The next thing I'm going to do is to come right here. I'm going to mark my shoulder divided by 2. My shoulder is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I'll mark 8 here. And I'll equally come here and mark 8 inches. And after marking that 8 inches, I'll draw a straight line across. The next thing that I'm going to do is to mark my shoulder slant. I'm going to be marking shoulder slant of 1.5 inch. So I mark 1.5 inch here. I'll come right here and mark my neck width from the center front. I'll be going with 4 inches for my neck width. Okay, so I come right here and mark 4 inches. And what I'm going to do is to connect this point here to my shoulder slant with a straight line. Go ahead and use a ruler for that. So you have it as accurately um, marked out as possible. I'll be going with a neck width of 3 inches for both um, front and back. So I'll come right here and mark 3 inches. And then what I'm going to do is to connect it with a curve, just like this. Okay, it's very, very simple. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to come right here, mark my bust circumference divided by 4. My bust circumference is 38. 38 divided by 4 is 9.5. So I mark 9.5. I'm going to be adding half an inch of ease to that. So make that 10 inches. Okay, so this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down here by one inch and what I'm going to do right now is to go on to connect this point here all the way to the end here. What I'm going to do right now is to come right here and just draw a cord for the armhole, connect it to this part right here. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is to just come right here and add seam allowance just only at the armhole and at the side seam area, okay? We have added seam allowance at the shoulder slope at the uh, neckline when we're drafting shoulder to this point right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is to just come right here, add my seam allowance for the armhole. I'm going with half, half an inch for the armhole, okay? And then I'm going to go with one inch for the side seam area. So I'll just go ahead and add it. And now that we have added our seam allowance of one inch at the side, I'm going to go on to cut it out following the markings that I have here. Cut the ample out, the shoulder slope, and then my neckline. So after cutting this up, this is what I have. 
What I'm going to do next is to open it up because we are going to go on to show the shoulder slope and the side seam of this dress before we go on to shaping it into the high low part. So I just open it up like this, okay? So you can see that right now I have the front and the back laying, up, laying on top of each other. So like I said, I will go on to sew the shoulder slope by half an inch, go on to sew the side seam by one inch. So after sewing, this is what our bodies looks like. Now, the neck depth that I went for is actually not enough for my head to pass through. The reason why I did that is because I'm still going to make a cut at the center front area. If you want to make this like other normal dresses, go on to deepen the neckline for the front and also make your neck width um, small, make your neck width um, wider so your head can actually pass through the dress without you having to struggle. So what I'm going to do right now is to come to the center front. I'm going to make a cut that is about four inches deep. So I went with four and a half inches right at the center front. What I'm going to do right now is to cut that line all the way to that four and a half inches point. The next thing that I'm going to do right now is to now open up the fabric such that we have the side seam in the middle. So just like this. This is so that we are able to cut the front and the back really well. So in order to create the high-low effect for this dress, what I'm going to do for my fabric is to come up at the front for the high-low effect by about six inches. The next thing I'm going to do is to connect from this point that I've marked here all the way to the bottom of the dress. And we're going to do that with a slight curve. Okay, so it's going to go like this. So can you see what I'm doing? It's going to go like this. And at the end of the day, we're going to have the back to be longer than the front. So after curving it out like that, I'm going to go on to cut this part that I do not need out. After cutting, guys, this is what the dress is going to look like. And so you can see that the front is sort of shorter than the back based on what we did right here. So we have created our high-low dress. So the next thing that I'm going to do is to mark my waist area. This is because I'm going to be attaching an inseam pocket to this. So I'll be going with 17. So I come right here at the side seam. Okay, this is how I place my table from the highest shoulder point. I mark 17 inches and then I'll be attaching a pocket of about five and a half inch. So that is going to make it uh, 22 and a half inches. Okay. So what I did was to open that part up because that is where we are going to insert the inseam pocket and I'll do the same thing for the other side seam. Now, this is how I'm going to cut my pocket. I have this piece of fabric right here. And what I'm going to do is to just place my hand in such a way that it is sort of, you know, like this. And I'm going to make sure that the opening of the pocket on this side is about five and a half inches. So I'll come right here and mark five and a half inch. All right, so I mark five and a half inch right here. And then I'm going to place my hand like this. And what I'm going to do is to sort of draw around my hand so that we can have where we are going to insert the pocket, okay? So that is what I'm doing right now. I just want to outline it so you can see. You can make your pocket actually a lot longer than this. And after drawing this out, I'll go on to add a half an inch. So add a half an inch all around. So this is going to be my inseam pocket, all right? And now that I've added a half an inch, I'm going to cut this out and then I'll duplicate it so I have one pocket for each side. So after cutting the pocket pieces for my dress, this is what I have. This is how we're going to place it such that it is slanting downwards. Okay, do not place it like this, place it like this. What we are going to do right now is to attach the pocket piece to the dress. So what I'm going to do is to bring this piece where I marked the um, 17 inches. I'm just going to place it there, okay? And then I'm going to pin it down. So just like this, okay? I'll pin it down here. I'll repeat the same thing here as well. Pin it down. Then I'll do the same thing for the second um, pocket piece. I'll attach it to the 
um, front side of the bodice. And what I'm going to do is to just go on to sew this edge here by a quarter inch, half an inch. That is fine. Repeat the same thing for this side. Okay, and you need to make sure that you are placing right sides, touching right sides. And after doing it for this side, I'll repeat it for this other side as well. And then come show you guys what we are going to do next. So after sewing the pocket pieces to the fabric, each one to the front and each one to the back, this is what I have. Now remember that I've already sewn my fabric, the side seam by a one inch seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is to continue to sew down but I'm just going to come about half inch below this pocket piece on this side. So I sew down like this and then I'm going to sew by half an inch, making sure I sew the two pieces together. Continue sewing by half an inch all the way around like this. Come right back to the seam allowance for this main fabric, which is one inch and sew down. So that is how I'm going to sew the pocket piece for the two sides. After sewing on the pockets, this is what we have. By the time we go on to turn it right sides out, we're going to have a perfectly finished pocket, a perfectly finished inseam pocket. So this is what we have for our pocket right here. So the next thing we're going to do is to create a loop for our button that we're going to attach to this dress. And this uh, fabric piece that I have here is measuring about one inch by about two and a half inch. This is because I'm using a very small button for this dress. So what I'm going to do right now is to fold this into two like this, okay? And then after folding, I'm going to cover it up like this. And then go on to sew the edge to create the button loop for our dress. So after sewing the button loop, this is what I have. What we want to do next is to conceal the neckline of the dress. I'm going to place the right side of my bias tape on the right side of my fabric. And what I'm going to do is to sew my bias tape onto the neckline, just like this. the bias tape all around the neckline this is what it looks like before i go on to close this part i'm going to come right at one of the sharp corners the part that we cut so i'm going to loosen that part up a bit okay the reason why i'm losing this part is because i'm going to insert the button loop in there so just like this i just fold it into two and what i'm going to do is to place it right here right on the inside and then i'm going to go on to stitch it up so you want to stitch this up such that whatever you have left your button can actually you know go through it so this is the excess that i have on this side i'll go on to trim it off and what we're going to do next is to come right here now this is how i like to close um, dresses or necklines or whatever place that i use a bias tape that is round i just leave a little bit of um bias tape on both ends and you can see that i have sort of like a bit of space here what i'm going to do is to just gather the bias tape like this such that it lays nice and flat on the fabric once that is achieved i'm just going to hold the bias tape like that and then i'll take it to my sewing machine and stitch this part all the way down and after stitching i always check to ensure that it lays nice and flat right there and once that is okay by me what i'm going to do is to cut off the excess like this okay and then i'm going to sew this part close so after sewing that part the next thing i'm going to do is to cover the neckline with the bias tape to conceal all the raw edges so i'm going to come right here so i flip it like this towards the inside and we have a quarter inch right at the edge here so that is what i'm going to use to cover it up like this and then i'll place it on my sewing machine and begin to sew so once i get to this corner here what i'm going to do is to fold it like this so i press the top part in 
So can you see what I'm doing? And then this side, I'm going to press it in like this. So it's going to make this part very, very easy to sew. Simple as that. So I'm just going to sew right over it, just like this, okay? And once I step on the bias tape on this side, I'm going to turn my fabric like this, and then I'll begin to sew down. So that is how I sew bias tape onto corners. Super, super easy. So before going on to sew the center, make sure to notch that part so that it's easy for your fabric to spread and also easy for you to sew. So after sewing the bias tape onto the neckline, this is what it looks like now. The front parts, they look quite funny, as you can see, okay? That is because I had to sort of like squeeze the bias tape to let the fabric accommodate it. So in order for us to have this done nice and neat, what I'm going to do is to fold this part in. So I fold it in like this. And what I'm going to do to ensure that it is nice and neat, as I folded it like this, I'll take it to this sewing machine and then just sew by a quarter inch or half an inch from the top and end where the bias tape ends, okay? So just sew diagonally like that. And after stitching it, guys, this is what our front neckline will look like. So you'll notice that this part will be a little bit relaxed, okay? So I can now go on to attach my button to this dress. And of course, we're going to move to the next part. So the next thing that we're going to do is to attach the sleeves. I created this sleeve from an existing sleeve pattern if you remember the wrap dress with ruffles that i made i'm using that sleeve pattern for that dress to create the sleeve for this one that i'm making now if you don't want to go ahead and you know watch the sleeve pattern on that video i'm going to link up a tutorial on how to draft your basic um, sleeve pattern you can go ahead and use that one thing i always say in my videos is that before you go on to cut your sleeve on fabric make sure to measure your sleeve head that's this part right here okay and it should actually be the same length as your armhole excluding your seam allowance very very important it should be the same as your armhole now if it is not the same the best bet for you to do is to elongate your armhole to fit the sleeve and once we've established that i'm going to go on to sew my sleeves by a one inch seam allowance which is what i have right here on my pattern and the one and a half inch seam allowance that we have at the bottom i'm going to do a road hem of course right after we sew the side seam so that i can insert my elastic into that place because the type of sleeve that we are making is a straight sleeve it is not a fitted sleeve so after sewing the side seam of the sleeve i notched the center of the sleeve head right here we are going to match that to the shoulder of the around the armhole so you have to turn your sleeve right sides out place it on the inside make sure right side of sleeve is touching right side of the fabric we are going to pin this part down then we are going to move to the side seam or the seam of the sleeve and match it to the side seam of the dress and of course we are going to pin that down as well and what we are going to do next is to take this to our sewing machine we are going to sew the sleeve and the armhole of the bodies together all around by a half an inch seam allowance and i'm going to repeat what i've done here for the other sleeve so the second to the last part of this dressmaking is the attachment of the fabric that will form the ruffles now if you look at this picture here you will see that the ruffles or the pleats is not a lot is very very small so that depends on the amount of fabric that you have if you want pleats as small as that go on to cut your fabric length to about one and a half times the length of the bottom of the dress okay, so go on to measure what you have all around here and then cut your fabric to one and a half times or two times the more fabric you cut the more full is going to get so i measured the length at the bottom here and mine is 80 inches total and what i did was to cut a fabric length of three times that length so i should be having fabric length of um, 240 plus inches here and what we are going to do is to create pleats all around the edge of the fabric so to make it easy for you this is what i'm going to advise you to do now divide your fabric length at the bottom that's for the dress divide the fabric into four so mine is 80 so i should be having like 20 20 inches on each mark use a chalk to 
mark each 20 inch and what i did next was to do the same thing for the fabric length for the pleats i divided it into four so since it is 240 inches if i should divide it into four that is going to be 66 i'm going to make chalk marks of 60 60 inch on the fabric so i pin each chalk mark on the pleat fabric that's the fabric that we're going to pleat i pin the chalk mark to the chalk mark on the dress so i'm going to be matching a 60 inch mark on the fabric to be pleated to the 20 inch mark on our dress fabric this means that the amount of fabric i'm going to pleat on the dress for each 20 inch part is going to be 60 inches so i tried to do it like this so that it is very very easy i know how to you know manage my fabric for each part you can equally go on to make it smaller by dividing your 20 inch into two making that um, 10 inch divide your 60 inch into two making that um 30 inches and then match it and pleat so i'll just go on to start doing my random pleats to cover up this space that i have here so after pleating and pinning all around this is what i have what i'm going to do right now is to take this to my sewing machine and i'm going to sew everything down together by a half an inch seam allowance so after sewing on the pleats this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to do is to show you how to make the belt piece that is very very simple as well as insert my elastic into my sleeve so in order to insert my elastic just like i did for this one here i said that we should hem it right and leave a little bit of space so that you'll be able to insert your elastic so i've passed my safety pin through the elastic and i'm just going to insert it into the allowance and begin to pull my elastic until i get to the other side okay to the other opening now you want to make sure that while inserting your elastic through the casing which we have created for it you want to make sure that this one right here doesn't go in totally if it does you actually have to you know start all over again so is either you pin it down or you watch and be careful while you are pulling your elastic through it so once i get to the other end what i'm going to do is to grab the two pieces of elastic i'm going to grab both ends and what i'm going to do is to take it to my sewing machine and stitch it by about half an inch so after stitching it by about half an inch i'm going to pull the elastic through it and then sew the opening that we have here we're going to sew it closed of course the elastic is going to be on the inside so that is exactly what i'm going to do for this part so that it's going to look exactly like what we have for this sleeve so the next thing that we're going to do is to create the belt piece for this dress so i have my fabric measuring 60 inches in length and the width is two and a half inches so the belt is actually going to be a small belt about one inch what i'm going to do is to fold the fabric piece like this with right side stretching I'm going to sew by a quarter inch here, sew by a quarter inch all the way down. And I'm going to give a little bit of space so that I can turn it um, right sides out. And then after I give about, okay, let's say two inches, I give about two inches, I continue sewing by a quarter inch all the way here and then sew this part closed. And after sewing the bell piece, what I'm going to do right now is to turn it right sides out. Okay, so I'll turn the smaller part first. What I'm going to do is just push that piece of fabric out like this. And for this other side, I'm going to start from the bottom and then we come out at that opening. So just like this, I just use my fabric scissors to push the fabric right sides out. What I do is after pushing the fabric through to some points where the fabric cannot move again, I use a pencil to actually push the fabrics, um, the fabric right sides out. So my long crochet needle became my loop toner. So that is what I used instead of a pencil and my belt piece is turned right sides out. So I'm just going to pull my fabric through like this until I have, you know, everything right sides out. And once I have it out, I'm just going to take the open part to my sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is to just stitch the edge down like that, press my belt piece, and then we have our belt done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, kindly give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, turn on the bell so you get updates when I post new videos. And I'm going to be seeing you guys in my next tutorial. Bye!